Good afternoon. Welcome to Thursday's Working Lunch. House prices are falling at their fastest rate for two years. That's what the surveyors are saying. But what impact is that having? On the markets, WH Smith's worries about a difficult Christmas and the secretive hedge fund industry is about to get a little less secretive. We'll be talking to the head of the hedge fund working group, Sir Andrew Large. And coming up to a year after the Fairpack fiasco and what has it meant for the companies in the same line of business? And this terraced house in Liverpool that's due to be knocked down has become the unusual location for a successful young entrepreneur. And when the time came to expand, well, he simply knocked a hole in the wall and moved next door. And I'm sure even Sir Andrew would admit that uh, hedge funds occasionally take a punt on entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship is one of those buzzwords thrown around like confetti. Politicians like it and schools now have to teach it. But what really makes a successful entrepreneur tick? Rob went along to meet one young man who's already launched one product and says he already has ideas for many more. By now you might be used to the fact on working lunch that entrepreneurs can crop up pretty much anywhere but this has to be one of the most unusual places of all because behind this graffitied house here in Liverpool is an absolute seething well, a nest of businesses all set up by a young successful entrepreneur. You won't believe what's on the other side of this because the backyard is the entrance to this uh, rather strange let's call it business complex and um, here's the entrepreneur question it's Chris Bradshaw hi Chris how are you and it's yeah, a quite well, unusual place you've got here isn't it sure it, it's raw most definitely yeah we have the uh, the living tower here the free fall living tower and then through this um, wall that we've uh, the hole in the wall that we've put we have the uh, all the offices so this is the entrance to the office it is yeah on. please come in mind your step so the entrance to, um, to the companies, just here you can see we've got our, um, our UR2 and um, our UR1 models. These are our flagship ones um, that we're selling loads of at the moment. These are bins? Bins for, um, for cigarettes and for chewing gum. Yeah, of course, with the smoking laws that just come into play, there's so much more uh, cigarette butts and uh, litter on the street. So hopefully um, these are, not only do they look good, but hopefully get rid of some of the mess. Let's have a look yeah. inside. This is the staff room area. Uh, and also the packaging room where we get all the um, products packaged um, for products. our uh, weekly, uh, you know, pickups that go all over the country. Through here we have our um, our caretakers, the two tortoise that look after the place, keep everything secure. And this room here we use for um, yeah, for fulfilling the orders. They've come out of here. We've got a few stacked here, but the main uh, the main stock is at our warehouse. We have our display bit here. A few of our products in the early days, actually. Um, this, for example, was the UR0, uh, and the, the UR1 that I just showed you coming into the entrance was the, was the evolution of that. Um, we touched it up. That's actually the very first model that I developed. That actually had a, a little key in it. Um, thank God I didn't make a load of those. So here we are on the landing area. This office here is um, Urban Revolution's office. So this is the, to do with the bins, cigarettes and the chewing gum litter. Uh, as I explained earlier. This is Samantha, my lovely office Back manager from South Africa. Uh, that's where, where, where she is. And then this is my desk here. This office here is um, home to actually three companies, oh, yeah. Rob. Um, the main one being uh, Dapper Distribution. And this is the company um, that we're about to launch at the end of this month, um, a distribution company where we sell high-end products to high-end licensed trades, so nice wine bars, nice restaurants and hotels. Um, two desks, as you can see, a display of uh, a few of our products. Um, this is um, David, my partner in Dapper Distribution. Oh, yeah. He sort of brings all the confectionery stuff together and I bring the hardware together. And this is my new work colleague, business development manager, Dave Webb. And uh, it's just joined the team. Told you it was a busy place, and it's only 18 months since Chris set up the business. He's already sold 4,000 of the bins, and all from a terraced house that's due for demolition. They'll be moving to new premises before then, by the way. Well, that's all been something of a whirlwind. Let's step back through the hole in the wall, out onto what I suppose is the executive terrace, or the backyard as it's known, to find out a bit more about this. And Chris, just tell me, first of all, if you can get past the, uh, the washing yeah. line. Yeah. Just how did you get started? That looks like a prototype to me. Indeed. Um, I had the crazy idea a year and a half ago of um, designing a sexy bin and putting uh, chewing gum and, uh, and cigarette holes in it. And uh, this was the first model. We did a bit of cardboard, a nice CD player, and... Um, that, that was the start of it and of course we evolved over time to our uh, first product, second product, the UR1 and we've gone all the way now, this is our UR6 one we've just launched which is the, the cigarette style one. 
And how hard was it to get? Bag. How hard was it to get from this stage to that? You know, and actually get things in production and out in the market. How hard was it? Um, it was very hard, but that's that's what makes it fun, you know. If it was easy, then uh, I, I probably wouldn't do it. But very very difficult, lots of challenges, and um, you know we don't get them made here, unfortunately, um, just because of the the, the labour costs. So obviously I've had to be dealing with a, a different culture in, in China. And what about finance? You know, setting up a business isn't cheap. How have you managed that? Um, I mean, you've spared no expense on the offices. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> thanks, Rob. Um, it, Talking figures, I needed to raise about £35,000, and that was to bring over uh, my first container. We've now brought over three, we're, we're on our fourth very soon. Um, so £35,000, and that came about 5000 from myself, and then a pool of um, family investment which brought it together, which I'm still paying back, um, slowly but surely. And I know you've had help from the Simon Weston Trust. I'm going to bring you in here, Jeff. Now, Jeff, you're from the Trust. Simon Weston was the guardsman injured in the Falklands, wasn't he? And he's, he's, in, he's involved now in helping businesses like this? Well, that's right, Rob. Uh, we work for Western Spirit Trading, which is part of the West, Simon Weston Foundation, it's, which is a youth charity. We, as a trading organisation, support the charity and we work on uh, business startups for uh, individuals on Merseyside. What kind of help could you offer, Chris, then? Well, what we did, I mean, a large part of it along the way is mentoring, but we started with the nuts and bolts of research in writing business plans, preparing for finance, and as Chris well knows, and lots of people do and lots of people don't, planning the business before you start is absolutely critical. But Chris, working with me, uh, went down that path and had a great start um, working and doing a, a tremendously aggressive sales uh, pitch um, to companies very successfully and why not because look at the product we, we fill all the boxes environmentally it's a quality product it fits uh, it's aesthetically pleasing so it's great for street furniture and it's in a tremendous deal on it and Chris what would be your top advice to someone in your position who's thinking about setting up a business some young person what would you say to them I, I well I'd like to go back to what Jeff just said um, planning I would say is um, very important and uh, you know, if you've got a good idea, tell people about it, ask people about it, um, but not just your family, of course, because they're always going to say good things. Uh, and go to somewhere like Western Spirit because th he gave me the initial confidence to put the business plan together, and now you know we're on four businesses, um, so it's uh, it it's all positive. That's great, Chris. Jeff, thanks so much. I'll stop there now because it started raining here in Liverpool, <laughs> and it's probably time to bring the washing in. Actually, that wasn't me. back to you. <laughs> well, since we've been on the air.